very warm welcome to the first episode of our new show on Top Gear, and an even warmer welcome to the new Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio, a car I've been awaiting for what feels like an eternity. This is the Italian M3, Alfa's answer to AMG, and boy does it need to be good, because the world needs great Italian cars, and this is surely Alfa's last real chance. So, into its voluptuous four-door saloon body, Alfa has dropped a thumping 512 horsepower twin-turbocharged 2.9-litre V6. Peak torque is 443 foot-pounds. Curb weight is 1,524 kilograms, thanks to expensive bits like carbon prop shaft and bonnet. The car is rear-wheel drive, and only the eight-speed ZF automatic is coming to the UK. The test car was a manual, don't ask, and was fitted with optional carbon ceramic brakes. Please, please, let it not be another false dawn rubbish alpha. And the news is very, very good indeed. On the road, this is a more comfortable car than the M3. It's got some adaptive dampers here and you could put them into a soft mode, which is independent of the kind of powertrain DNA. So you can have short throttle and loud exhaust and all that stuff, but you can still slacken the dampers off. And like that, this car has an advantage over the BMW and I'm really pleased they've done that. It also feels like it's got more rubber in the suspension. So tire and suspension noise isn't, it's quieter than it is in the BMW too. This is quite a refined car. For long miles, it'll be a good thing to be inside. This manual gearbox, uh, I'm not so sure about that. Shift quality is a bit rubbery, clutch pedal and movement's not the best. I thought I'd love the manual. The fact that we're not gonna get it doesn't worry me at all in the UK, that is. And the cabin, well, it's a pretty good place to sit, actually. I'm comfortable, the seat is good and low. This is the optional carbon seat. The driving position is excellent. You can make up your minds whether it looks good or not. I think it looks great. It feels Italian. Okay, some of the materials are not quite as good as they are in the M3, but you know what? If you buy a car based on that, you're nuts anyway. So as a road car, I think this thing is genuinely pleasant. I mean that, it'll be good for long journeys, but it also has 500 horsepower, which is a bit too much to exploit on the public highway. So we're gonna go somewhere and let it kind of show what it can do. So here we are at a circuit, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, because this is a beautiful facility to use, but it's also the home of Alfa Romeo, their test track, Bellocco, and it won't come as any surprise for you to realize that if the Giulia Quadrifoglio is going to work anywhere, it's going to work here because it was developed here. So what do we think? First of all, this engine is really exciting. I think in terms of a turbocharged motor that really goes at the top end, this might be the best one I've ever driven. This is a seriously fast car. I reckon it's 10% quicker than an M3. But what it doesn't do is get going from low down in quite the same way as the M3. The torque peak is higher, but then it's more exciting at the top end. So actually it probably is a more exciting motor, but it doesn't have that crazy torque low down. In fact, sometimes you feel yourself saying, oh, come on, get going. Also, the calibration I talked about on the road that's a bit fluffy, well, it doesn't matter so much on the circuit because you're up it and going. What about this chassis? Well, first of all, can we just stop and celebrate the fact that I'm driving a rear wheel drive, 500 horsepower Alfa Romeo? I didn't think I'd ever say that. So I'm just so happy, but I mustn't let it cloud my objectivity. What have we got here? Well, this is supposed to be lighter than an M3, but it feels bigger and bulkier than an M3. So that's not necessarily a good thing. It's on a sticky Corsa tire, have second gear. Yeah, the front of the car is great. A little bit of understeering wash out, but you can neutralize that with the throttle because it's got so much torque. Is it really kind of slidable? Well, let's see. Yes, it really is. It's got ample torque to do that stuff all day long. I don't feel a great sense of connection in the car. You know, how steering and everything else kind of gets in the way of that. And I do feel more connected in an M3. So where are we? I think we've got a chassis that can play comfortable on the road and super playful on the track, which is just what you want. Brakes, massive ceramic things, so yeah, they're pretty damn good. Brake pedal feel, pretty good. Again, the whole thing's a little bit inert, but that's what you expect of quite a big saloon car. Engine revs out beautifully, 
really does. There are a couple of things worth noting. The variable differential, the calibration about the way it works with the engine's torque, I don't think it's quite as slick as you have in either the Mercedes C63 or the M3. It's not quite there, but then, you know, these guys, I suppose, haven't done rear-wheel drive for about 20 or 30 years, so they've got to start somewhere, haven't they? Okay, I've got the dampers in the stiffest setting now, and what it is revealing is that the rear axle location maybe isn't quite up to the BMW either. I've got, occasionally it does feel like there's quite a bit of rubber in a sub-mount or something that's not fully connected there, but oh, I'm splitting hairs. What I love is you can just do this kind of thing. I mean, come on, it's an Alfa and we can do that. It's just magnificent. Letting go of the back axle at 160 k's. All is well with the world. Criticisms? Well, the ESP system means that you can turn it off when you go into the full race mode, which gives you the noisy engine and crispiest throttle response. But if you trigger the ABS when you've got that switched off, it brings some intervention back in, which means that transitions are a problem. I know that's going to be a massive concern for all people that buy these cars when they're driving them through Fulham, but it's not something worth noting. For example, that doesn't happen in some of the German brands. I think you know what I'm getting at here. If you look at every single discipline of performance, most of them, the BMW and the Mercedes do a little bit better, if you ask me, but it's tiny degrees. Where the Alpha counters, it's got this ride comfort that the BMW can't match, and I think that's a big thing on the road. But if you add them all up, it just misses out in certain little areas. Yes, the engine's better at the top end, but I think the noise of this at low revs is a bit of a letdown. It's great when you get up it. So is it as good as an M3? Objectively, no, I don't think it is. But it's not a million miles off, and it looks fantastic. I know it's subjective, and it's Alfa Romeo. Wow. It's a lovely combination. And I think, however many they bring into the UK, they'll sell all of them. I think it'll be a success. I just think it's the car that people want to drive. Um, so it's a great effort, a really, really great effort. Did we really expect them to turn out and beat the best in the class straight out? No, we didn't. So well done, you guys. I like this car. I like Polacco. I'm going to go have an espresso and pretend I'm Italian. <laughs>